First up is Tamara, a home cook from Calgary, Alberta, who likes to spice things up. I grew up in a very multicultural area. I learned a lot of my cooking from tasting. A lot of my dishes are uh, Indian and Asian based because a lot of my friends' parents were uh, first generation Canadian. I got to learn from the best. I take this so seriously. I'm a teacher in my day job, and I gave up my career to be able to come here and do something different. I need to win this apron so bad. I want to prove it to myself, to my family. I want it. Each home cook will have five minutes to plate their signature dish. Oh, my goodness! She sounds feisty. If their dish gets a yes from at least two of the three judges, they will win a white apron and move on to the next stage of the competition. Hello there. What's your name? Tamara. What are you cooking for us today? Traditional samosas, vegan style with uh, potato, pea, and cashew masala. Wow, you've got five minutes to get it all done. Time starts now. Thank you very much. So if you're from Alberta, I'm surprised you're not cooking beef. I wanted to go a little bit outside the box. We got a gambling gal. Risk taker, absolutely. I actually put myself through university playing poker. You like poker? I love poker. Perfect. Why are you tasting those sauces? Are they store bought absolutely something? Absolutely not. If I don't taste it before I plate it, how am I supposed to know that exactly the seasonings are correct? I want to make sure that it needs enough salt, it needs enough whatever, and if it doesn't, I can adjust it on the plate. Did you grow up in a household full of food? Food to me is emotion. And if you don't show emotion in your food, then I don't think you're succeeding. I like how clean you work. Thank you very much, Chef. Very important. It is. Where did this dish come from? My parents weren't around a lot. My father passed away at a young age, and my mother was incapacitated. One of the friend's houses I lived at was an East Indian family from Pakistan. She taught me everything I know. It's not overly hot. It's nice aromatic flavors. The dough is good and crisp. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Are you nervous? With you, yes, yeah, Chef. <laughs> Poker play don't show you if they're nervous. So you got two sauces here. I did the tamarind with a bitter flavor, and the mango is sweet. So I personally blend both, but depends on your palate. Sweet and sour. That's a Chinese combination. Everybody say I have a poker face. Try to beat this face. <clears throat> Last one in, which means I can use my hands. Please. Just the way they're meant to be eaten. Absolutely. What sauce is this? Sweet, spicy green mango. Mm. Not authentic. Yes, needed to bring something of myself to the plate. Not sure how I feel about that. Tamara, for someone to come from Alberta, where they have the best beef in Canada, and do a vegetarian samosa, it's either stupid or brilliant. Yes, chef. In your case, it's clearly brilliant. It's a yes for me. I'm known as a chef who takes tremendous risks with food. Yes, chef. And I'm known to get incredible returns from those risks. I was blown away by the flavors. For that reason, I'm a yes. <laughs> Mara, come on up here. Absolutely yes. Thank you so much. What is the greatest feeling in poker, having the raw flesh when everyone is all in. I definitely have what it takes to be Canada's first master chef. Oh my God! This is just the best experience in the whole entire world. Ooh, I got a sweat on. The last home cook of the day is Dora. Oh, look how fancy this sucker is. A certified plumber and single mom from Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. I had my son when I was a third year plumber. I miss him pretty good. This is too much of an opportunity to say no to. 
I'd like to have a bakery. Get whatever I've got out there, feed it to the masses. Bring it on, life. We're ready. <sighs> you bet your ass I'm getting an apron today. What's your name? My name is Dora. What are you making for us today? Deconstructed blueberry pudding cake. Deconstructed? I gotta give you something a little fancified, I think. What do you do for a living? I'm a journeyman plumber, gas fitter, Red Seal certification. You know, I can draw a lot of parallels between plumbing and cooking. They both require your hands, focus. A lot of it goes down the drain. A lot of it goes down the drain. <laughs> Two minutes left. You guys make me nervous a bit. I'm really interested in who you're cooking for today. I'm cooking for my son. His name's Devin J. Wow. We're done. Please put your dish forward. Oh, goodness. Here she comes. This looks beautiful. I'm quite surprised by how elegant this is. Oh, God, don't make me cry. What would it mean to win? Everything. I don't think anything can stop you. I get that feeling. Thank you. Nothing can. Why are you crying? What I you... am just so emotional right now. It's crazy. What's triggering that? Being away from my son. And how long have you been away? Well, about a week. So about I'm starting to go a little squirrely. I see. You know, if, if you were to move forward in this competition, you know it's going to be a lot longer. That's OK. You can take that on. You betcha I can take anything. You're a plumber. I'm a fighter. You're a fighter. Or the destroyer. It's very light. Thank you. Thank you. How do you cook on the other side of the kitchen, the savory? Heck, that's what I most feel known for. Is that right? You betcha. Demon, meet the destroyer. <sighs> Yeah. You have made a major, major mistake. You should not be a plumber. That cake was so elegant, so light. It's a no-brainer. It's a yes. <laughs> that cake was just complete harmony. <laughs> Two. It's a yes. Thank you. Dora. I love the way it tasted. It was slightly lemony, citrus flavor, light, delicate. The blueberry balance was amazing. The toughest thing you're gonna have to deal with is being without your son for a while longer. It's a thank yes. Thank you so much. Come up here and get your apron. Oh, thank you. There you go. No, Give him a big hug. Thank you, I'm a little sweaty. All right. I want a hug you too. I want a big plumber's hug. Yeah. Hello. Thank you so much, <laughs> thank you guys. You. All righty. I want you to go tell your son the good news, OK? I will. Right away. I will, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What, baby? What? Mommy got her white apron. <gasps> Yay! <sighs> but it does mean I'm not gonna see her for a little while, baby. Okay? Bye, I know, you know. Okay. I sure love you. I miss you so much. I love you too. This is a life changing thing. <laughs> Absolutely. From here on in, my life has changed. It's great. The first home cook of the day is Lynn, a military veteran from Moncton, New Brunswick. I've loved cooking my whole life. Other people have to follow recipes and cookbooks, and me, it's all here, and it's mostly there. And people don't expect that of me when they see me. It's like, oh, you can cook? Well, you don't look like you actually eat, so like, really, you cook? Don't underestimate the little French girl from a small town in northern New Brunswick. In order to get a white apron, Lynn must impress two of the three judges. Hello there. What's your name? My name is Lynn. And what are you cooking for us today? Today I'm making uh, venison tenderloin with pan-seared foie gras on a celery root puree. You've got five minutes to present that. Lynn, why did you choose that dish? I grew up very poor. And every fall, my dad would go hunting with his friends. Whatever they killed, that was our meat for the winter. What are you making right now? That's a ploy. It's a pancake that's made with buckwheat flour, and it's only cooked on one side, and you always throw the first one out for luck. Huh. This was eaten at every meal when I was growing up. 
Lynn, what do you do for a living? Actually, sir, I'm a military veteran, and I was injured uh, in the line of duty. Wow. Uh, I banged my knee up pretty good. I've had 11 knee surgeries. They also told me I'd never be able to walk in heels, but here I am. Looks like you're moving around pretty good to me. So why are you here? Why do you want to win this? The reason I joined the military is because my parents couldn't afford to send me to university. And now it's time to do what I want to do. Well, Lynn, I tell you, I haven't seen someone put so much and do so much in five minutes. Are you sure you can pull it off? Everybody told me it was impossible for a girl from Edmonton to ever make it on MasterChef. So you're here to prove them wrong, right? Yes, I am going to prove them wrong. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Where did you learn to cook foie gras like that? I went to a restaurant in Montreal once, and I had it, and by the taste and the texture, that's how I learned how to cook the foie gras. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Why do you think people underestimate you? I second guess myself. That's my biggest weakness. We can't do that in Master Chef. No. Wow, this is very ambitious. So you've been in the military. How long were you there for? In all in all, 17 years. People still doubt you? They told me I'd never make it through the military because I was a female. Wow. Look at that. How did you get all the little holes in there? It's beautiful. It's just the technique of whipping it and the amount of buckwheat flour you put. What are you going to say to the doubters? If you make it on. I'm not going to say anything to the doubters. I won't have to. I'll know myself what I did. Should we huddle? Her dish is good. Very good. The plate was a bit small, yeah. crowded. The presentation, the flavor. Did you love her dish, though? You're self taught, you said, right? Yes. Would a white apron take you to the next level, do you think? It just seems unattainable, so trade just about anything for one of those. <laughs> I can't believe it. Everybody told me it was impossible. I am going to be Canada's next master chef. I will. The last home cook to audition is Debbie. We're gonna rock it. A special needs teacher from Port Hood, Nova Scotia. Perfect. I love cooking. I'm passionate about it. It is part of my personality. It's part of me. I have parties a lot of the time. I'm used to cooking for anywhere between 30 and 50 people. So I'm good at it. I really am. If I don't come out of there with a white apron, there's something wrong. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? My name is Debbie. What are you making? I am making crab cakes with spicy mustard sauce and a mango curry sauce. The way she handles that knife. You have some great energy. Don't let uh, this beauty fool you here. I'm uh, <laughs> 54 years old, but hey, let me tell you, I can run with the rest of them out there. Debbie, what is your food dream? My cousin would like to build a little inn, and she would like me to be the chef. I want another career when I finish teaching. And I'm hoping today that you'll love my crab cake so much that you'll give me that white apron. And I'm telling you right now, you'll never eat crab cakes as good. Debbie, are you a competitive person? I'm good enough to be here. I want to win. I'm telling you, I want to win. All right, time's up. <sighs> oh, Debbie. So you got the yellow sauce, you got the white sauce. What's the difference? The mango curry one is more it's sweeter, but I like the mustard one too. I like okay. something that's a little spicy. Is it as good as you say it is? Oh, I'm shaking. Watching you move around the kitchen there, cooking was a joy. Oh, thank you. And now it's just down to the taste. 
has a good crunch to it. It's interesting flavors. Thank you. You hear that? Yep. Wow, crispy. You know your food, don't you? I do. I didn't get to be this size without eating it. <laughs> this doesn't usually happen, but I'm kind of lost for words. This is um... bad or good. Debbie, you promised me a crab cake that was tasty. You said the sauce was gonna be spicy and sweet. You promised me that. And you delivered. Oh. Yes. Thank you. I'd be an absolute idiot to say no to you. The crust was light, some very fresh, bright flavors. Absolute yes. Okay. That was absolutely delicious. All that's really left to do is to ask you to come up here and get an apron. Oh my God. <laughs> come on up here, Debbie. Try this oh on for size. Oh my God, I can't there believe we go. this. Thank you so much. Oh. Incredible. She's great. She's great. I'm gonna have a little more of this crab cake. Oh my God, I can't even tell you how excited I am. Oh, I love you. Oh, I can breathe. I can breathe, <laughs> I think. The next home cook to try for an apron is Tammy, a retail clerk and mother of six from Agassiz, BC. I believe in my dish. It's different, but it's all me. I have a real passion for wild game cooking. I love to hunt, and I can support my family without going into a grocery store. I feel that this is my time, and I feel that I've earned it. Five years ago, my husband was tragically taken in a workplace accident. I was left with six beautiful children that I raise on my own. No matter what life throws at you, you can just keep on trudging forward, and you can finally get to your goal. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Tammy. And what are you cooking for us today? Smoked elk carpaccio. Interesting. Tammy, what does this dish say about you? I enjoy the wilderness. My daughter and I hunt, and uh, that is the reason why I chose the elk as my primary protein. I am a mother of six children. <laughs> How are they going to feel if you get in? I know it's going to be tough, but we've been through worse. My husband was, was uh, killed in a workplace accident five years ago. You're raising six children on your own? Yes, sir. The last five years has been, it's been a challenge. So you're bringing a lot of strengths to this competition. Yes. I like to be, uh, be an example for single moms and for widows out there that you can accomplish anything. Is this a dish that uh, the kids at home would love? Yes, the kids enjoy it. Is that right? So you've yes. done this before? Yes, I have. When you smoke meat, it can either work out really well, or if it's too much, it tastes like an old ashtray. Yes, sir. Wow, that's impressive. Who are you doing this for? I'm doing this for me. When I filled out my application, it said, what is your ambition in life? And I had to sit back and I thought, I haven't thought about what my ambition is for years. Thank you. You're welcome. This looks very, very beautiful. But why did you choose elk? Elk is succulent, it's soft, it's like butter. Where'd you learn how to plate this way? I taught myself. You're a good teacher. <laughs> Thank you. So you have a little bit of crispy basil, pine nuts? Yes. A lot of flavor there. What's this sauce? Uh, it is a fig balsamic with uh, a basil infused olive oil. It's elegant, full of flavor. It's left me thinking. 
Tammy, you did something very unique with your dish. There were so many wonderful notes, so many great flavors, and that smoke came through really well. So it's a yes from me. Thank you. Tammy, this was the first time I've ever had elk. The way you do it, I'll have it again. It's definitely a yes. It was incredibly moist, incredibly flavorful. That was absolutely delicious. Come on up here and get your apron, Tammy. Oh, my lord. There we go. Congratulations, Thank Tammy. Look forward to seeing more of you. I feel exhilarated. I feel like this huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and now I can work, work for what I want to achieve, which is to be Master Chef Canada. We're going to the West Coast, people. The last home cook of the day is David, a concrete worker and family man from Surrey, BC. I'm on Master Chef Canada, boys. Where's the daddy? My wife and kids are everything to me. My four-year-old and my six-year-old are absolutely everything. I'm a better person because of them. When dad cooks, we judge him. I'm always in competition mode, even at home, I'm competing. My wife's my high school sweetheart. I've spent more time with her on this earth than without her, and she's a strong supporter. I may be a concrete worker, but my passion, my love, and what makes me happiest is cooking. Hello, chefs. What's your name? My name is David. Hi, David. What dish are you going to be cooking for us? A uh, black hot sable fish and Dungeness crab potato salad. Wow. So, David, why are you here? I want to have this opportunity to change where I'm, what I'm currently doing. And I'm a concrete contractor, so I do concrete work. I started doing concrete at 17 years old. I made some poor decisions. I actually uh, didn't finish school. I only have a grade 10 education, so when an opportunity like this came up to compete in something that I absolutely love, at my age, I, I signed up. Who inspires you to cook your best? My wife, my little boys, four and five. They're amazing. 30 seconds, what are you putting on now? I smoked an egg. You smoked a hard boiled egg? I, I smoked the yolk. David. Hello, Chef. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. The presentation is terrific. Really nice. Good sense of style. Thank you. Where did you learn to cook uh, cod like that? I've been cooking it for some time. Yeah, it's very important to get that skin crispy. Well, it is. Yeah. You're absolutely right. David, thank you. Thank you. Your boys, do you like your food? They love my food. Can they eat crab? I'm four and five. You know, I think they're still on carrots. When I eat oysters, I actually hide them because they love eating raw oysters. Oh, God's nicely done. Flakes, smoke egg yolk. Yes. This is the miso sauce here. It is miso, sable fish. They love each other. Those are concrete mason hands. Yes, chef. And those hands did this. You think working with concrete is your calling in life? You know, unfortunately, I was young and had no choice. Is this your time to turn it around, do you think? This is it. This is validation that I can turn things around. David, you said you made some poor choices, but clearly getting married and starting a family were not poor choices, were no. they? Can you introduce your family to us, please? Okay. Look, there's a lot of capability there, I think. All of us? The presentation, the flavor. It's nicely done. What a beautiful family. Thank you. My wife, Tannis, and this is Nuno. Far end, that's JJ. JJ, how old are you? I'm five. I'm turning six in eight days. Wow. What do you think of your dad's cooking? Is he better with concrete or with pasta? Stuff. Well, let me tell you what I think of what your dad made today. We have tasted a lot of food.
It's the best dish I've had so far. Incredible. I've never seen anyone that is a bricklayer or laying cement put food on a plate the way you did it. So elegant. It's a yes for me. Thank you. David, you have a beautiful family, and your food is beautiful. So it's a yes from me as well. Thank you. JJ, can you come on up here and help me with something? You're better dressed than us. <laughs> <laughs> we think your dad is an excellent cook. And we'd like you to give him something. Do you think you can go down and give him that? I think my dad's the best cook in the whole wide world. Of course, the choice to have a family was the best choice, but this has been the best choice in a long time. The first home cook to try for an apron is Vince, a general contractor from Pickering, Ontario. Being the father of two sets of twins is, is fantastic. I married this beautiful woman over here, and then she gave me four beautiful little girls, and then I got a girl dog. <laughs> I'm doing this for the women in my life because there's a whole whack of them. <laughs> I'm making eggplant parmigiana. Grandmother used to make this all the time. I'm gonna exchange this apron for a white one with my name on it. It's a great opportunity. I really gotta chase this right now. Here comes our first home cook of the season. Hello there. Hello, chefs. What's your name? My name is Vince. And what you're cooking for us today? I'm making an eggplant parmigiana with a side arugula salad on a parmigiano crisp. Vince, are you Sicilian? <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> is this something you cook at home a lot? I made it many, many times for my girls, for my wife. How old are the girls? I have two sets of twins, chef. Oh, wow. wow. A set that is 10 years old. I have a set that is six years old. I picked up cooking after my wife had the second set, and I haven't really stopped and I enjoy it. What's your food dream, Vince? Open a private supper club. I just want to give people the ultimate entertainment experience. All I want is for people around me to be happy. That's it. So, Vince, who inspires you? My kids are my drive. Everything I do, I do for them, and I want to take on this other part of my life to show them that there really are no limits, and they can do pretty much whatever they want. Are you finished or are you just getting started? I'm just getting started. I don't plan on leaving. Hi there, Vince. Walk me through very quickly how you put it together. Basically layered, first layer of sauce, a little bit of basil, parmesan, then I put a layer of eggplant, a piece of prosciutto cotto, I put a piece of mozzarella, going three-tiered. Prosciutto cotto is a nice little twist to it. You know what you're doing. Vince. Chef. So when I dig into this, what am I expected to see? It's going to be meaty all the way around, crisp on top, authentic Italian dish. Tomato sauce give a very good acidity. You have eggplants with the perfect texture. And you got the cheese and the ham to complement all this, binding everything together. And your description is 100% accurate. Well, this is pretty. Is this the kind of food that you make for your family? 100%. My family really appreciates when I cook like this for them. Isn't it ironic that the one thing that you make for your family might actually take you away from your family. Vince, you know, a good chef knows exactly what they want to give. But most important, they have to deliver. You deliver. So for me, it's definitely a yes. Thank you, chef. Vince, it's your eggplant parmigiana. It was delicious, so it's a big yes from me. Well done. Thank you. 
Vince, you need me to say yes in order for you to get this apron. The problem with eggplant parmigiana, it has a tendency to be heavy and greasy. Yours, on the other hand, was so light, and the prosciutto, it was absolutely succulent. For me, it's a yes. The eggplant parmigiana was the best I ever had. I came here to earn this apron, and I did. I did it right, I did it the way I wanted to do it, and I'm wearing it. Look, look, look what I have. I gotta show them that they can do whatever the hell they want. Whenever they wanna do it, they can do it. Whole new page for me and my family. Next up is Mary, an insurance broker from Toronto. I guess I kind of fell into being an insurance broker, but food is my passion. It's all I think about all day. I'm here for me and I'm here for my mom. I was raised by a single mother. I can't express to anybody how awesome she is. I've always tried to help her and really I took over the kitchen. Mary's been cooking for me and the whole family since she was about eight years old. I've always kind of done the, the right and responsible things. Mom, now, you're a terrible high fiver, but I love you so much. <laughs> but this is my dream and this is my time. Now it's time to see if Mary can earn three S's and a coveted white apron from the judges. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? My name's Mary. And what are you cooking for us today? Uh, lemon meringue pie. Sounds lovely. You've got a little less than five minutes to get it done. Okay, perfect. Mary, when did you start cooking? I started cooking when I was about four years old. Why did you start so late? <laughs> so late? Actually, I was in a, uh, my family was in a car accident when I was four. Uh, my mom and brother were both seriously injured. I wasn't. My dad passed away in the accident. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. I'm an A-type personality, so I always want to be there for people, and it's just kind of how I show them how I care. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance broker, which uh, helped me when I wrecked my first uh, pie tart back out there. So I had insurance, and I made a second one. What's your culinary dream? I would love to run a catering business. I love sharing my food with people that I care about, and I want people to understand that you can make really good food at home and have a great time while you're making it. I say the same. Yeah. There's my dish. <laughs> well, right off the top, you put together a dish that looks, I think, absolutely wonderful. Let's have a taste. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Rich, creamy meringue, the zingy, fresh flavors with the berries, that crunchy texture of the spun sugar, and the crispiness of that pastry. Just a wonderful, wonderful dessert. Thank you. <laughs> For me, a lemon meringue, the hardest part is to make sure that the fill is not lumpy. So let me give it a try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Smooth as silk. Just <laughs> a bit of meringue here. <laughs> Got the right consistency. Maybe a little bit more color. Burn to, you know, to take a little bit away from the sugar, but this is amazing. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. This meringue is delicious, but it's very rich. Yes. In order for this to work, the tart needs to be tart. Yes. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Well, Mary, I think we're going to keep this short and sweet. For me, it's a hands down yes. Okay. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm no fool. When I see talent, I know it. And you have that talent. So it's a yes. Oh my God. Come up here and grab okay. your apron. Ah! I bet you got so many people running at you. Thank you. Oh my God. We're excited ah, to see what you do next. Okay. You have really earned this. Thank you. So, welcome Thank you so to MasterChef Canada. I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel like I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be like, oh, this never happened. But it is happening and I am so excited. 
Christopher, a salon manager from Maple, Ontario, is hoping to turn things around and score a coveted white apron. Growing up with hard of hearing parents forced me to be the interpreter of the family, which is okay. I love to sign. I think it's beautiful. About seven years ago, my parents separated. Since then, I took it upon myself to cook for my father and my brother, Victor. I am here to win the title of Master Chef Canada. I want to change my life. I want to change my family's lives. I want to prove to myself that I am something. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Jennifer Baglione. And what are you cooking for us today? Risotto topped with a Bella Vitano formaggio. Is this dish a family favorite? Yes. They are the essence of who I am. We struggled a bit growing up, and I really took it upon myself to be the mother of the family. Why would such a young person have such a responsibility bestowed upon them? My father is hard of hearing. Despite his uh, handicap, he uh, has a fantastic job. And he works way too hard to come home to a mediocre meal. If you were to win, what is your dream? My father has pretty much killed himself to give me the life that he feels I deserve. So ultimately, I want to take care of him. You know, I want him to retire. Are you almost finished? Because you have about 10 seconds left. And I'm done. See how it glistens? That's beautiful, isn't it? That's a good sign for a risotto. Delicious. A rich base to it. The mushrooms, the foundation. The rice is still a little loose. Just a tiny little firmness to it. And then the cheese that sort of rounds things out and richens it up. You've taken on a lot over the years. It's almost as if you've put your life on hold to take care of everyone else's around you. Yes, Chef. Up until this very moment. Thank you. Hi, Jennifer. You're cooking rice to a Chinese judge. Yes. How do you feel? I feel pretty confident. Rice is very important to the Chinese because it's a symbol of life. And this is the symbol of love. So, you're the mother hen in your home. Yes, I am. I wear that title proudly. How many times have you made risotto for your dad? Close to 100. Close to 100. At least. Cheese has a nice bite, creamy, delicious. You both sure? So Jennifer, it is crystal clear to the three of us that the guiding force in your life is your father. That's my papa. <laughs> well, Michael, Alvin, and myself would be honored to meet him. Is that possible? Is he here today? Yes, he is. We would love to meet him. OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they want to meet you. My father. <laughs> Jennifer, what's your father's name? My father's name is Luciano. Can you translate something to Luciano for us? Absolutely. Please tell him that the three of us think that you are an exceptional cook. Thank you. <laughs> and what the three of us would like to give you is this apron. <laughs> Please come up and get it. <laughs> I always thought I would be nobody, that I'd be left in the dark. And uh, now I know I'm not going to. And I'm, I'm just so happy. Next up are April Lee and Jeremy, two home cooks from the prairies determined to turn the tide and meet the judges' high standards. The white apron represents my future. I want to put Calgary on the map. We love farm to table food, and I'm going to show the rest of Canada that. My food dream is to be at the top of the Winnipeg food scene. I learned to make sushi by myself. I taught myself the white apron would mean everything to me. Hello there. 
What's your name? I'm Jeremy. April Lee. What are you making today? Crispy skin duck breast, on a bed of kaboka squash with a little bit of ginger. Shrimp tempura roll. It's pretty traditional, but I'm doing my own garnishes on it. Spicy mayo with lime zest, green onions, and bonito flakes. The honey is from my beehive. I just moved out to an acreage. So you produce your own products? Part of my MasterChef Canada dream is I want to win so I can do a farm-to-table restaurant. Tell me about yourself. What was your upbringing like? My parents are immigrants from the Philippines. They sacrificed a lot so that we could have what we have. My mom, I lost her to cancer. I have her tattooed on my arm, and I know that she would be proud watching me here today. And I'm done. April Lee. The color on the duck is perfect, seasoned beautifully. Your dish was a knockout. It's an absolute yes. Thank you. Jeremy. Great textures, flavors, the precision of it. It was delicious, so it's a big yes from me. Yes, thank you, chef. It's up to me now, isn't it? You need me to say yes to get this apron. <laughs> I love what's on that plate. Yes! I hope you have some room on that arm for the MasterChef Canada tattoo. Yes! Welcome to the top 14. I won't let you down. Top 14! Our last home cook of the day is Terry, a Nigerian immigrant from Edmonton, Alberta. I came to Canada six years ago. It's amazing. There's no way else I'd rather be in the world. I'm currently a PhD law student, but cooking has always been my passion. Almost all my life, I've done things to please my parents, and there's nothing wrong with that. They deserve it. But I feel it's time I do something for Terry. And Terry loves cooking. Terry loves baking. Terry is good at this. <laughs> Canada gives you the opportunity to be who you want to be, and I'm going to do all it takes to win MasterChef Canada. What's your name? My name is Terry. And what are you making today? I'm making a spiced pumpkin roulade with a pecan cream cheese frosting. Where are you from, Terry? I'm originally from Nigeria, but I'm now based in Edmonton, Canada. I've been here for the past six years. I'm a PhD law student, but I love cooking. I love baking more than cooking, and I'm... Sorry, rewind. You're a law student. I'm a PhD law student. PhD? Yeah. Yes, wow. I am. It's incredible. Thank and you, you want to be a chef? I believe you get the greatest joy from what you love doing. And cooking is what I love doing. Would your parents share the same passion you have? My dad was my greatest supporter. Unfortunately, he died last year. But I know if he was alive now, I'm sure he'll be proud today of seeing me following my dreams and my passion. If this tastes as good as it sounds, you're going to be the one to watch. You know that. I know that. They're all scared out there. They're all scared because you're a lawyer. <laughs> Are you done? I'm done. Walk me through this. These are the truffles that are... The uh, pumpkin pecan truffles with a little bit, little bit of maple syrup. This is a... Uh, I'm sorry. Why are you so nervous right now? I want this so bad. I want to come to you and say I want this so bad, but... I want this so bad. This is... You have three degrees, right? I have three law degrees, and I'm on my fourth one. On your fourth one? Yes, I and am. And how old are you? I'm 33. And you're a little worried right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. This is what I've been looking for. Thank you. <laughs> if it tastes as good as it looks. It, it's going to taste amazing. <laughs> then take a deep breath. <sighs> mm. Wow. The spices in there are incredible. Thank you, it's my own special blend of spices. I taste, is there all spice in there, a clove? There's a, an eighth of a teaspoon of clove, yeah. I taste that's fantastic, like. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Hi, chef. How are you doing? I'm just nervous and anxious, but I. Do I make you nervous? You do. <laughs> well, you know, it's a well-known fact that I'm not a big fan of desserts. And we did dessert here, so is this gonna change my mind? I really want to impress you. I tell ya. If I'm disappointed, I may have to sue you. <laughs> okay, let's go with the cake.
very nice flavors. Thank and you. And you just said, not too sweet. Thank you. I tell you what, Terry. Yes, Chef. Today, I won't sue you. Thank you, Chef. Hi there, Terry. Hi, Chef. You pleased with the way this turned out? I strive for perfection in all I do. You are picky, huh? <laughs> that is a great quality in a chef. Thank you, Chef. I get up front a little hit of that lemon, which is nice and clean. And then you get that aroma as if you're walking through a spice market, sort of wafting through the air. Just, it's just very light and subtle. You have, I think, a great sensibility when it comes to flavors, and certainly with spices. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, I think the presentation, it works. It's, it's, it's a little bit predictable on the presentation side. That's something I think uh, needs a little attention. Thank you, Terry. Terry? Yes, Chef. The dessert that you presented today. Yes, sir. And I speak for my two colleagues here when I say this, is the best dish we've tasted so far in this competition. Oh. It is outstanding. My goodness. So I've got something for you. <laughs> Come on up here and get your apron. Oh my Come goodness. On up. Oh Come on up here. Goodness. That's it. Look at that. You may have to get rid of all those law books and replace them with cookbooks. There we go. So I'm guessing you're pretty happy. I'm happy. What a great way to finish. I like to see that, he's over the moon. It's gonna be a great competition. Top 14 MasterChef Canada. You guys better watch out. <laughs>